what's the predominant form of nitrogen in soil? It's in the organisms. It's in the organic matter. And so most of the time, that nitrogen is present as protein. That's organic matter and organisms. The next most predominant or <clears throat> important pool of nitrogen, we jump to the inorganic forms. So nitrate, nitrite, ammonium, aerobic forms of nitrogen. The forms of aerobic forms of nitrogen. What happens to these forms of nitrogen when we go anaerobic? Let's think about any of the inorganic forms of nitrogen here. When we go inorganic, we're going to rip the oxygens off of there. So that set of organisms, anaerobes, they need that oxygen as the final step in the electron transfer chain. We're going to rip oxygen off and put back hydrogen. We're going to suck up hydrogen as we go anaerobic, and we're going to end up with NH3. This is ammonia. What does ammonia smell like? Yeah, it smells like ammonia, P-U. When you smell ammonia coming out of anything, you know you've gone anaerobic. You've lost the beneficial organisms you're selecting for the disease critters in your soils. And what's happening to your nitrogen? Where's it going? This is a gas, isn't it? You're smelling it. Where's your nitrogen going? Yeah, bye. It's not in your soil anymore. It's not in your compost. It's not in your compost tea. If you can smell it, you're losing it. And we can lose significant amounts of this. The stronger it smells. Well, ammonium, same thing. It will con get converted to NH3 under anaerobic conditions. If we go anaerobic slow enough, the aerobic organisms just go to sleep. If we go anaerobic too fast, they'll die and they'll you know, the um, bodies will lyse, and then we'll have ammonia being produced. Under anaerobic conditions, we also have anaerobic organisms growing. So still, the predominant form of nitrogen is in protein. Our plants have to have soluble nitrogen. So if you're an annual plant, you require nitrate. If you're a perennial plant, you require mostly ammonium. Then there's a couple books been written that if you're trying to grow trees or shrubs, if you're trying to grow perennial grasses, you don't put nitrate on them. Bad idea. Because you will select for the disease-causing organisms that require high nitrate levels. You really like rhizoctonia? Put some nitrate on. You like fusarium? Mm-hmm. Nitrate. Especially when you're growing a perennial plant. This is a bad idea. So there's a balance here that we've got to have. Depending on whether you're growing an annual or perennial plant, we have to have the soluble nitrogen for a plant to take up. So we've got to have these forms, but we only want these forms right around the root. Away from the root, if we have these soluble forms of nitrogen and you've got water moving through your soil, what's going to happen to those inorganic forms of nitrogen? Yeah, out the bottom of your soil into your groundwater and your drinking water, and now you're going to have to pay money to clean it up so you can drink that water. How do we hold and keep those forms of nitrogen in the soil? How do we cycle them back around and make them available back to the plant, but only when the plant requires? And wouldn't it be wise if we let the plant be in control of that? So we've got to go through all of these processes. We'll get there.